Have you ever taken a photo where your intuition told you something was wrong with the composition of the lighting, but you couldn't quite put your finger on exactly what the problem was? Well, in this video, I'm talking about a technique called the surreal to real spectrum, and it should help you troubleshoot photography issues just like this. If you've ever taken a lighting class, I'm willing to bet it covered three-point lighting. It's the lighting equivalent of the rule of thirds in that it's used everywhere and without discrimination. Three-point lighting can look great. I'm not here to knock it. It's been around since the early 1900s or so, so it's certainly stood the test of time. But it's not the only option out there. It's a tool, and like every tool, it works great in some situations, but not so well in others. What dictates when it works and when it doesn't is context. Thinking about context means trying to make every element in your photo work together in harmony. Most photographers, I'm guilty of this as well, don't think about context enough. We learn a light setup that works and we stick to it. We try and force it into every photo because we've been told it looks great, you know, so why wouldn't we? Well, here's why, because context affects how people perceive or feel about your photos. Imagine if you got up from your sofa or desk or whatever and walked outside, but the lighting didn't change. Everything was still bathed in artificial light. That would be a pretty surreal experience, right? You'd instantly feel that something unusual was happening. That's because your unconscious has built up this internal view of what is normal and what is abnormal, what is real and what is surreal. And when something doesn't fit with those expectations, when something is out of context, well, that creates a sense of tension. This means that every photo you take exists on this spectrum, from real to surreal. A photo on the real side of the spectrum is one where everything looks pretty normal. If it's an outdoor photo, it will probably have one main light source because one light source is what your brain expects outside. That's what feels natural or real. A photo on the surreal side of the spectrum breaks some or all of these conventions. It goes against our internal view of how the world should be. Maybe like this image of Dan, it has three hard light sources. And that's why this image doesn't feel right because we don't live on a planet with three suns. So it looks odd, fake even. It kind of feels like Dan is in front of a backdrop, like a bad green screen photo. And I'm not using the term feel in a fluffy way either. Your unconscious mind communicates with you in emotions, not in words. So when you see something scary, your initial reaction is to feel scared. And that fear comes from your unconscious mind noticing the tension between what it considers normal and this abnormal, potentially threatening situation. That's why superhero imagery is so captivating because the cinematographers purposefully make it surreal, more than real, more lights, more atmosphere, more saturation. And all of this puts your unconscious brain on alert, which increases the sense of drama. Now, I'm not saying one is better than the other, that real is better than surreal or vice versa. Just that every creative decision you make will affect where your photo sits on this spectrum. And for a photo to be successful, and by that I mean to not trigger unwanted tension in the viewer. Well, to do that, every element in that photo needs to work in harmony to create this cohesive, sensical scene. The problem I've noticed, though, is that many photographers create surreal photos without even realizing it. They're mixing superhero lighting with a scene that really shouldn't have that type of lighting. And I think that's because every other lighting tutorial out there teaches that classic three light setup as a go-to for all situations. But it's not that easy though. There isn't a magical light setup that's perfect for every situation. I mean, how boring would that be anyway? Cinematographers understand this and they use a more contextual approach. Their lighting is, it's more in harmony with the rest of the scene. And that's probably because as a cinematographer, you want to keep your viewer inside the story, accidentally triggering the unconscious with you know, contextually incorrect lighting would break that spell. This contextual approach also matters in photography. And it's not actually that hard to do. You just need to be consistent 
with your creative decisions, your composition, your lighting, your pose, color, lens choice, perspective, location, editing style, all of these should be in harmony. If just one of those elements is off, it's gonna create tension in a viewer's mind. If your lighting screams surreal, well, the whole image is probably a bust. It won't work. It'll just look fake. It's gonna jar with what your unconscious mind is expecting. And as I said, I'm as guilty of this as anyone. Luckily, my wife is never shy with constructive criticism and will point out if the lighting doesn't match the rest of the image. For a long time though, I was in denial about this and I pushed back hard against this feedback. I think, you know, in these situations, it can be hard to see the forest for the trees. And I was so laser focused on creating technically correct images that I just didn't see how unharmonious they looked when they were out of context. Like this one Dan and I took a year ago in Compostela. I wanted to squeeze one last photo into that shoot and I'd seen a great location 50 meters up the road. So I ran ahead and set up some lights before the color in the sky completely disappeared. In a rush, I threw up three lights, which was enough to separate the model's dark clothes from the darkening sky. And while the lighting does this pretty well, it is also completely out of context with the rest of the scene. And because of that, it doesn't quite feel right. It actually feels quite cartoonish to me now when I look at it. The surreal lighting is in tension with the rest of the image. I have three strobes on high power here, even though you can see that the sun has already set behind the model, which doesn't really make sense. And I didn't put orange gels on the lights either, which makes the model look like he's being lit up by car headlights rather than by the warm red tones of a sunset. All of this bugs me as this could have been a much better photo. This next photo is different though. Everything about it is surreal. The pose, the atmosphere, the lighting, the color. And that's why it works. It's a surreal photo through and through. It's high impact, high drama and high concept. But it doesn't feel wrong because everything is working in context. Here's another surreal photo where all the elements are working together in harmony. This is a surreal pose. I lifted it straight out of a Marvel comic, actually. I've also gone really heavy on the smoke machine here, so there's a lot of atmosphere. And this lighting would make no sense if this was meant to feel real, but it doesn't matter because this is clearly a surreal scene. If, on the other hand, you want to create photos that feel real, then you need to make sure that they parallel the real world. Your lighting and you know everything else has to feel normal. That doesn't mean you can't use multiple light sources, by the way. It just means you need to use them more intentionally, making sure that you achieve that subject separation that you need in as natural a way as possible. I think this photo of an Escalamutha manages this pretty well. We still use multiple lights and a smoke machine here, but they're woven together in a way which won't create tension in your mind because it all kind of looks natural how it works together. We waited till the sun was down so that its location in the sky wasn't clear. And I also used a softbox on the model so the lighting was less directional, less intense. The second light is being used to bring out shadow detail rather than to create a visible strong rim light around the models. And the atmosphere from the smoke machine feels natural because it's barely there. It's more like morning mist there's just enough of it to decontrast the grass behind the model and to give us some separation, but nothing more. Here's another artificially lit image that sits on the real side of the spectrum. We moved under a tree to shade us from the early afternoon direct sun and then placed a strobe light to the right of the model. From this angle, the light looks flattering, but it still feels natural like a sunrise. And I love the geometry in this pose the clear triangular shape. But because the model appears to be in the middle of an action, lost in thought almost, that geometry draws your eye into the photo, but it doesn't feel contrived or fake like some fashion poses can. It feels natural. So there you have it. Every creative decision you make affects where your photo sits on the real to surreal spectrum. And I think it's best to ensure you create cohesive images, images that are either entirely real or entirely surreal. Creating an image with out of context elements will trigger that unconscious tension, that feeling of unease that you probably don't want from your photos. 
If you use the same lighting and composition techniques as everyone else, you'll just end up creating similar photos to everyone else. And while there's nothing wrong with copying other people's light setups, it's a really great idea when you're starting off, but eventually you're gonna hit this point where you just stop improving, you plateau, and all your photos just start to look a little bit samey. Thinking about context, about how every element in your photo needs to work together in harmony, I think that's a really great way to take your work to the next level and to start standing out from the crowd by looking different. Good luck.